During the pandemic, Igor Goliak exploded what our notions of theater could be, turning Arlequin Players Theater, a fringe theater company in Needham, Massachusetts, into one of the most innovative in the world. His journey here, though, is a familiar one. He is Jewish, he is from Ukraine, and he was a refugee, making his way to the United States with his family when he was 11. The story of refugees escaping war is one that he has told often in his work. Now he's leaning heavily on his fellow artists to help refugees who have escaped the humanitarian crisis in his native Ukraine. Yesterday someone sent me uh, pictures that I'm attaching of a black box theater in Kiev, which has been turned into a shelter. It looks just like our theater here. This could be us. This is us. I'm sending a message from our theater to your theater, a message of hope. We are with you. We stand with you. We are against Putin's war. I caught up with him before he left for Moldova to work with families fleeing the war. Igor Goliak, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you so much for inviting me. So uh, just to start, you were born in Kyiv. You, your family came here from Ukraine. You started an organization, Artists for Ukraine. What are you doing? We're actually going over there. There's seven artists, uh, two from Boston. Uh, including myself and five from New York and we're going over there uh, to Moldova um, uh, to spend some time there working with refugees. And is this all arts based? Is that what, what's fueling what you'll do when you get there? Yeah, it's all art, art based training. There is there is uh, drama therapy, there is uh, music therapy. But how do you use art? What is art therapy, especially when you're working with refugees who've just seen immeasurable uh, uh, horror? Well, uh, I think there's a uh, there's a, a bunch of different things that are involved. Uh, some are giving them tools for survival and for coping with uh, with the trauma that they had faced and that they carry with them, uh, and also uh, a hope for the f uh, for the future, a way to connect uh, these people together and give them hope and give them and support them. I read an interview with you where you said something, and we'll, we'll make sure it's true, but something I hadn't heard people say, that, the, that art isn't necessarily a solution. You often hear that art will save our culture, especially in really difficult times such as these. Are, do you have skeptical, are, is there, are you skeptical in that regard? It's very difficult for me to say what it actually, the, does it change people? It, it, especially with what's happening in the world right now. Um, with what's happening with the country where I grew up uh, in uh, Ukraine. Uh, you know, there's a, there's a huge internal conflict because I got my education in Russia. I'm originally from Ukraine. Um, and when, when uh, one, for one to say art saves the world, where I saw the art that ha was happening in Russia, and I'm from Ukraine, and Russia uh, is doing just horrific things in Ukraine, um, and, and didn't so is help. It, is it, so help me understand here, is it hard to reconcile the art that existed in Russia with what Russia is doing right now? Yeah, because, because if uh, art could save the world, uh, or, or if art could really change what uh, Putin is doing, and it's not changing with the direction of this war. And it's not changing the direction of this war. So, um, you know, maybe I need some time for, for this to pass, to actually have some distance, to be able to understand how do I reconcile those things. But at this point, it's, it's difficult for me to say, yeah, you know. Uh, it it, well, it sounds it more like a mission state, like a, it sounds more like a, like a mission statement, like, how do we get funding? We do, art changes people, and here's the way that it changes people. Give us funding. Well, so this is interesting. Cause, well, I'm one of those people who I think... This is going to be awful. <laughs> no, no, I appreciate the truth and candor. As I said, you're the only person I've ever heard say this. This I appreciate. So I guess when I think of it, I wonder, does art save the world on the other side? I mean, you're going over to use art therapy and as, as people hopefully are able to come out of this, hopefully there is a coming out of this, mm -hmm. is art then the salvation or is it too late? Well, uh, it can help, as I said, I think it can help connect people. Uh, I think it can help heal people. 
um, or, or heal through connection, uh, through empathy, uh, through understanding that another person understands you. Um, so on, and it's it's also it's also therapy, right? It's it's uh, usually when we produce produce a, a show, we're not looking for therapy per se. Uh, we're looking to connect people, but not through therapy, through art. So it's I'm questioning this as 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 you are <laughs> to me right now. So let's talk about what you're doing here with Arlington Players Theater. One of the first pieces you presented in this moment of, of worldwide conflict is The Orchard, the, 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 based on, of course, the Chekhov play. What was the impetus for that? Well, we actually started with, uh, during the pandemic, we started with uh, State versus Natasha, which was the first uh, experiment in, in virtual theater and whatever that is, virtual theater, digital theater, di digital art. Natasha, you're the baddest damn chick on earth. Would you marry me? He's mine, he was mine. I had no intention of giving him a win, that she comes and won. Um, and then we had Jessica Hecht and Mikhail Baryshnikov come to see the show virtually on Zoom. And we started uh, talking to them, uh, I started talking to them about the possibility of doing uh, Cherry Orchard. And, um, and then we met, we did a, 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 we, we did a fully virtual version called Chekhov OS. Uh, on Zoom, where uh, Brzezhnikov played Chekhov. In the head, the piece is already ready. It's called the Vishnyov Sad. And it was filmed in green green screen uh, st studio with live actor and and uh, audience interacting with this live actor, choosing scenes and so forth. We continued this experimentation now with the Orchard, which is a a, a, a hybrid, which is. Uh, it has a live in theater uh, production and also uh, a, a virtual production that informs the live and in theater experience. You are so singular in the way that you did this during the pandemic. So many people tried to figure out how to be digitally present during the pandemic, but you, you took it to a different level. So the job of a director is to, to come into a space, analyze the space. What are the advantages of this specific space that are not present in a different space? So what are the advantages of a virtual space? What does that give us? What can we play with? And it's just, the, it's just kind of the way of thinking that I've always used in all of my productions. And it just, the place of action of this production took, uh, was virtual. Uh, so for me, nothing changed. And is nothing, is nothing off limits? Is it boundless when you enter the, the digital realm, the virtual realm? It, it is boundless and that's why it's so difficult because you actually don't know, you're, we're just discovering the things that affect people. Like we know in a real theater, how can we affect people? We can affect with lights, we can affect with music, we can affect how we position the audience members, where the stage is, where the actors are, blocking in 3D space. The, a lot of those things, tools that you could use to affect uh, are taken away. So what are the tools that you could use? For example, immediate interaction with the audience, like you could put something in a chat and the, audio, the actors can see that. They, that doesn't exist in, in, in a live theater production. So what other advantages of virtual, of that space, be it virtual or at a train station that exist during that time, here and now? Do you go back to traditional theater after this or is that, is that done for you and, and now it's this new hybrid mode, it's just you keep pushing in that realm? I'm interested in experimenting with with the virtual, the hybrid, uh, we've uh, had a bunch of successes and we've had some failures and, uh, and we're learning and we're continue, continually moving. I, for me, like conventional theater doesn't really exist. Like it, it's e it, it either, it either, theater either uh, sparks something, be it virtual or live in person, or it doesn't. Like, th th there's, there, there's no other thing, there, there's, there's no other theater. It's either, it, it either comes together and, and makes, makes people connect and makes people feel something uh, and embraces something, or it doesn't. And it could be anywhere. It could be on top of this building. 
or in my living room, as I or, enjoyed a couple times during the pandemic. <laughs> or in, uh, in your living room. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right, well, Igor Goliak, always great to speak with you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.